Hello, how are we? Thank you for joining us. My name is Nibal Awad, class of 2012. I am the president of the Alumni Association and I wanna thank everyone for being here. Um, I love alumni, alumni um, reunion weekend. I know it's a little different this year, but I'm excited we're all here and we have the opportunity to recognize our very special honorees. Um, before I get started, I just want to thank Megan Hansen, our Director of Alumni, and our advancement team for pulling this off. I know, yeah. I know it's different, but a lot of logistics, and I know it was um, really hard this year, so we really appreciate you making this happen again. So Alumni Weekend, I always think about coming back, celebrating with um, my classmates, getting to meet new alumni. Um, you know, there's nothing better than having an amazing alumni community. I think it really, you know, besides obviously the amazing academic program and the unbelievable student experience, you can really tell a lot about a school based on its alumni pride and its involvement. So I really appreciate you showing up, being here, engaging with the university. It means a lot and, um, you know, it's just a great weekend and I hope we can do this We'll, we'll do this every year. Hopefully it won't um, keep us back ever again. So once again, I just want to welcome our alumni honorees, our reunion celebrating, our alumni celebrating their reunion weekend. Um, President Mialis, it's so nice to see you in person. And our faculty, staff, family, and friends. Um, the importance of alumni awards and recognizing our fellow Hawks together as a community is so special. Like I said, this is the 10th reunion of this award ceremony. And it's always so incredible to hear everything that our alumni have been doing behind the scenes and really representing uh, this great university. Alumni are the common denominator that really define this institution and all that we do. So I'm proud to stand here as our alumni president and honor these incredible people. So I'll be back um, a couple of times I'm seeing this event, but at this time I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Amy Berkeley, who's our Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Hi everyone. Um, you know, I usually never read a speech, but there are so many important things and so many important people that we wanna point out. I am gonna read a in a little bit, but um, as, uh, Nabal said, my name is Amy Berkeley, and I've only been here for about 15 months, and I was here a very short time, uh, and COVID came and shut all the doors. And um, being someone that didn't go to Roger Williams originally, and being sort of an adopted part of the family, one of the things that has really touched me is how much the character of this community came through a Zoom screen, or came through a phone call, or came through you know, when we were behind masks and we had those few interactions in person. And I really, part of me is like, why didn't I go here? <laughs> because I think there is a, a, a communal feeling here that is palpable when you walk on campus. And, and the fact that you guys are here, this must, for some of us, this is a, our first social interaction we've had in a long time. So for us to be the recipient of you being here in person is, is really special for us, so thank you. Um, so the alumni who are being recognized here today are some of the best representations of the values that we hold so dear. Sharon and Omar truly embody our core values and our core purpose of strengthening society by choosing to engage in the problems of the communities we serve. You know, choice is one of the few things we have, and when you make that choice, I think that that represents to all of us what we're really capable of doing. Um, Jamie, Mac, and Jim know the importance of our alumni network and lifelong connections because they brought an unmatched energy to reunions and brought connections and classmates together, sharing the common bond of Hawk Pride. And I don't know if, um, any of you have seen a, lo a recent video we had, but our president knows how to salute our Go Hawks slogan very well. <laughs> um, our newest alumni classes of 2020 and 2021 have shown the world that they can do hard things and succeed. They have preserved during the pandemic and missed out on senior year activities, but nevertheless show up and bring the Hawk pride knowing that they are not alone. That, that you guys are carrying forth this connection and this, um, 
this spirit in such a hard year is is so important to all of us who missed you know seeing you on campus all year long um, these alumni and all of you are part of an expansive alumni network with tremendous accomplishments and willingness to help fellow Hawks. It makes me really proud to work with each and every one of you. Um, so the future is bright, and part of the reason the future is bright is because of President Mialis, and I want to introduce him now. Um, and joy I hope you join me in welcoming him and hearing his vision. Thank you, Amy, and it's wonderful to be here in front of alums. Uh, I, uh, I had two brief trips to New York, I think, to meet alums, and then COVID hit, and that was it. So it's wonderful to have you back on campus, and I'm looking forward to developing close relationships to alums, and, uh, uh, and it is part of our, uh, our commitment of transforming the university to make uh, the alumni a much more integral part of the university than they have been in, in the past. And I want to thank you for your leadership, for being here. And of course, uh, a lot of you are distinguished alums, and that's why you get, uh, you, you're getting awards. We had a, a challenging year, um, and uh, we, we did very, very well. We were one of the best universities in, in uh, addressing the COVID issue. Uh, we we uh, spend a lot of money to make sure that we're healthy, but the students and the faculty and, and the staff were very responsible, and we managed to come out uh, healthy and strong. And one of the nicest things that actually happened is we built much stronger bonds between administration and faculty and students and, and staff. I think we're much of a closer family now because of dealing with the crisis than we were before. And I think that's going to build the foundation of us implementing the strategic plan that you'll hear during the dinner time that we're putting together to move the university to really transform the university. Um, I was, uh, I didn't go to Roger Williams, I went to Tufts, and uh, one of my most memorable moments is when I got an alumni award from Tufts. I, was, I got the alumni, whatever they call it, award, and uh, still it's something, there was a little medal that I wear on my academic regalia, and uh, it's wonderful when your alma mater uh, thinks back to all the wonderful things you did after you graduated and, uh, and gives you an award because it's, she's so proud of what you did. And we're very proud of all you have done as alumni. I want to congratulate the awardees. And now I want to welcome Nibal back to the podium and you'll hear from me more during the dinner. Thank you so much. This time I'm gonna invite Kelly Scaffarello. <laughs> I mess it up and it's not in front of me. Um, who is our co-vice president of the Alumni Association. Kelly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna do a little uh, fun fact trivia for uh, those in the room. Um, who graduated, I'm probably the only one that's gonna raise my hand, but who graduated before 20, 2002? There we go. We got we got Chip right there. Okay, we have. What's your name? Joanne. Welcome. Happy to have you here. So, fun fact about this building. We have others. Oh, all right. Well, so you guys who are raising your hand, it's really nice to meet you all too. And I'll introduce myself afterwards personally to you. Yeah. Hi. Wow. All right. You should be up here talking. <laughs> well, well, so the fun fact about this building, I don't know if you remember, and I don't know if this was actually here, but when I was here, this building you're standing in was actually the old student union. I am standing where there were a whole bunch of tables where we would pretend to study, and right over there where there's the, uh, that space underneath the, um, the stand, the, the, the stairs, was the bookstore, and right in the back where 
the Starbucks was or is was the uh, like get pizza and get your mail and play pool and all that fun stuff. And right in the back over here was where the Hawks Eye, the, the newspaper, the radio station, and then there was like a coffee shop called the Other Place. And then before that thing it was like the Rat Skeller where you could actually drink beer. So this building looks a lot different to me today, but there's a lot of history and we're all connected. So I just thought I'd give you a little history about this building that you're standing in right now. So. Um, so I am going to present the Roger Williams Hawk Award. Um, now this award is presented to an outstanding RWU student or students who have school spirit and have fostered engagement among peers to participate with the Roger Williams Alumni Association. The students have exemplified the Hawk spirit and have shown an interest in being involved and contributing to the Roger Williams Alumni Association's mission. This inaugural award will go to the class officers of 2020 and 2021, which we will never forget those years ever. Um, their senior years were marked by, obviously, the pandemic, virtual learning, social events, canceled during a year unlike anything we have planned. And through it all, you guys rose to the occasion, and you created something special for your classmates, which I think will last you a lifetime. And you truly demonstrate the hawk spirit. So I'm going to throw on my 20-year-old hat from volleyball when I was here, get my spirit going, and I'll start with the class of 2020. Joining us virtually are Vice President Kevin Deeb and Secretary Allie Klein. Also being honored are President Michaela Bertoletti and Treasurer Mia Joyce. With a little help, a little, probably a lot, from Carol Sacchetti, our Assistant Dean of Students, I want to give you an idea of what this class faced during this past year. Our first award winners have truly shown us how to be leaders and how to lead gracefully through anything thrown their way. I'm sure it was a lot. During their fall semester, 2019, everything was going as planned as they created events for the class, weekly meetings for committees of 15 peers who have started conversations about the commencement ball, commencement and plans for the final days on campus. And the officers weren't just leaders for their class, but leaders on campus connecting with the community, which is what Roger Williams is all about, the community, and building lifelong relationships. They prepared for the spring by touring the convention center for the ball, and they picked out the menu for finalizing details. They were in the process of planning two major events when senior year spring break occurred. And they planned that in weeks time, they would be back to finish key details and enjoy six more weeks of finishing up at Roger Williams. I think we all know how that went during spring break. We experienced in our world an unimaginable public health crisis and the class of 2020 didn't get to celebrate together on campus until two weeks ago when they came back to walk across stage and be in community once again. And for that, I just say congratulations to you guys for that. Um, so Michaela and Kevin and Allie and Mia, you stood strong with your hawk, being a proud hawk when there was uncertainty surrounding all of you. You met with various administrators to represent your class supremely well. And you planned a commencement, not for yourselves, but for your classmates. You held the interests of your classmates up high to help others have closure and celebration when the time was right. You were the student leaders we all needed when some may have stepped back, but you gathered your class at virtual alumni events. You helped to plan the Grad Walk 2021, and you kept in touch with your classmates, which as you know is so vital this past year of connecting with people that matter the most to you. We are grateful to have you, Michaela, Kevin, Allie, and Mia, join the alumni ranks, and we look forward to your involvement as leaders in our alumni community, because we will be looking to you to be the next leaders of this great community. So I am honored to present the first Roger Williams Hawk Award to Michaela, Kevin, Allie, and Mia on behalf of the Roger Williams Alumni Associations. Let's give them a rousing applause, right? Let's go. Congratulations. So Allie Klein is on Zoom, and we're going to unmute you, Allie for you to accept this fantastic award. Hi everybody, can you hear me? 
Well, first, I just want to thank you for inviting us here. And on behalf of myself and our, my class officers, we are just so grateful um, to be given this award. I have a statement written here. Um, class of 2020 has endured a lot of emotional and physical challenges alongside the rest of the world. However, Roger Williams has provided a sense of normalcy and closure for the class of 2020. On behalf of myself and my three class officers, we are humbled to accept this alumni award for the class of 2020. Thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts. We are so proud to be a part of this community. Here we go, Hawks. Thank you, Allie. And we'll be reaching out to you because we want to bring you in the fold on the other side. So be ready, OK? OK, um, so next we have the class of 2021 officers. Joining us virtually is President Katie Long. And also being honored are Vice President Judith, Judith Sufford, Vice President Mia Betancourt, Secretary Elena Bibbo, and Treasurer Ben Manning. And if I butchered your names, my apologies. Um, but these officers, um, Katie, Judith, Mia, Elena, and Ben, kept their chins held high despite having numerous events canceled and a senior year challenge by the pandemic. Instead of giving up, again, this group took the lead to provide a sense of normalcy as best as possible for their class while adapting to the change on campus life. There was plenty of uncertainty around this type of event, event planning, whether we could be virtual or whether it would be in person. Each event had to have a plan A, B, C, D. I'm going to say X, Y, and Z as well. These leaders made time to get in touch with members of their class, and they cared for their class, classmates' experiences. And they wanted to make sure that they were a resource to them. They held meetings and conversations with others to include as many people in, as possible in the decision-making process, which, again, is a lifelong skill that you will take forever with you, and it matters. So. Um, that's, that's good. Um, they held meetings and conversations with others to include as many as possible in the decision-making process, including meetings in the rec center to be safe and distance. They went above and beyond creating new traditions and events, which is always a great thing, especially providing a memorable steak and ale and senior barbecue to make sure that their class felt a sense of community prior to graduation. Katie, Mia, Judith, Ben, and Elena, you have provided commitment, reliability, professionalism, and enthusiasm in and outside of the classroom throughout this past year. You have served as class officers, and in some cases, almost your entire Roger Williams career. And you have shown the class of 2021 that you went above and beyond of what was expected as a class and class leaders. You have advocated for your class, you brought the community together, and we are proud to see you all cross the stage during the May grad walk. You have exemplified what it means to be a leader through extraordinary times. While excelling in your academics, your co-curricular involvement, your internships, and other employment, and exhibited the Roger Williams University spirit that so many of the alums here fondly remember. You honed amazing qualities that will serve you in the next chapter of your life. Roger Williams, has become a better place because of what you have accomplished, and we welcome you on the other side to the alumni community. So I am really honored for, um, to present the first Roger Williams Hawk Award to Katie, Judith, Mia, Elena, and Ben on behalf of the Roger Williams Alumni Associations. Again, let's give them a great applause. Katie is on Zoom, and uh, we will unmute you, and we look forward to hearing your words. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I would just like to start by saying thank you on behalf of myself and my fellow class officers. It is an honor to accept this award and have our work in campus engagement be recognized. After four years of being involved with student life, I look back at the friends, experiences, and achievements that it has awarded me with fondness. And I'm leaving Roger Williams with relationships and connections that will serve me throughout a lifetime. I owe my fellow class officers, Mia, Judith, Basha, and Ben, a thank you as well. Without their passion, dedication, and perseverance, none of our work would have come to fruition. 
As we leave Roger Williams and become alumni, I look forward to the future. And I'm so grateful for the last four years that Roger Williams has given me. As my cabinet member, Ben Manning, always says, it's a great day to be a Hawk. Thank you, Katie. And I'll, I'll, I'll add this to the class of 2020 and 2021. You guys really did crush it. And so I want you to know the other side, we got you. When you come to the alumni side, we got you. And we're going to get you involved and take your spirit and your energy. And we're going to make sure that you have the best friggin' experience possible because you deserve it. You've earned it. So congratulations to you guys. So you're stuck with me for one more award. Apologies. Um, this is uh, the Roger Williams Spirit Award. Uh, a recipient of this award is an alum with a positive and spirited relation with the university. Someone who has led and participated in reunion activities over the year and encouraged classmates to engage with the school during the reunion year. Recipients promote goodwill to other alums and foster friendship and camaraderie in the Roger Williams community. This inaugural award will go to the reunion chairs for the class of 2016, Jim Kelly, and the class of 2015, Jamie Warner and Mac Doyle. We are celebrating two fifth year reunions this year, well, because COVID. Um, both classes are led by dynamic leaders, ready to jump in and create excitement and community for their classmates. Uh, Jim Kelly is unable to be here today and he'll accept his award at a, at a Boston reunion um, later in the summer. But with us today, in person, we have Jamie Warner and Mac Doyle. Where are you guys? Hey. <clears throat> so Jamie and Mac uh, are the reunion co-chairs for the class of 5th, uh, 2015 fifth year reunion. They have dedicated hours, stand up guys. They have dedicated hours um, to bringing classmates back together. And I am so happy to see their friends here today celebrating together as the class with the most attendees for the weekend. Awesome. The original fifth year reunion was set for 2020 and uh, when the global public health crisis hit all of us, everything, the dates were canceled. But Jamie and Mac were determined to have their fifth year, which I think is really cool, so thank you. Um, and they made it happen by keeping in close contact with their classmates about the changing plans, texting friends, regular calls with the alumni office, and keeping the communications open for all involved. It would not have been possible without Jamie and Mac's commitment to the weekend. Jamie has been nicknamed the university mayor. <laughs> they give you something for that? They better. Um, the university mayor by friends because she engaged um, in conversa engaging conversations with, uh, promotes Roger Williams everywhere and instills an excitement among peers to get involved. Jamie is a proud RWU alum, continuing a legacy within the family. Um, Dad Skip Warner, class of 1980. Um, the RWU spirit is strong and uh, Jamie loves getting others to join. Mac is a positive and loyal RWU ambassador, always more than willing to do what is needed and always with a smile. Um, caring for experience of his classmates more than his own uh, and always made decisions with all in mind. Jamie's publicist experience and Mac's marketing and events experience together definitely helped as they crafted messages to their class um, through text messages, social posts, and advised on reaching peers. It has been a pleasure for all of us to continue to work with you guys through the years and going forward future years. The partnership between the alumni office and reunion co-chairs is vital to the success of the reunion, bringing alumni back together in the community. Community is a word of the weekend because we are lifelong relationships supporting each other and fellow Hawks along the way. Jamie and Mac exemplify the RWU spirit with a genuine desire to connect alumni gather in community and celebrate accomplishments of the alumni network. Their energy and ideas are unmatched and their friendship makes a phenomenal team, which that's really cool too. When alumni have the excitement and influence to bring others to join together and remember the special bond here at Roger Williams that they shared with their group, it's a special thing. Jamie and Mac embody the RWU spirit and serve as enthusiastic and loyal ambassadors. 
They represent the RWU alumni community so well, and it is my honor to present the Roger Williams Spirit Award to Jamie Warner and Mac Doyle, class of 2025, on behalf of the Alumni Association. So, thank you. Sure, yeah. I know Jamie. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone from the Alumni Association and the university for having us back at campus. You know, you leave or you graduate from Roger Williams with an education to chase your, pas to chase your passions in your career. But when you come back to a weekend like, that, like this, it's not about that. It's about the relationships. It's about the friendships. It's about the people you've met along your journey and along your way. We're young in our journey, and uh, we're continuing on. It's been phenomenal to reconnect with over 50 of our friends um, in person. We're hoping to continue to do it. We want to thank everybody for having us, and uh, we look forward to a, a wonderful evening tonight and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Well, it's kind of hard to beat that, but... Um... <laughs> Honestly, being a second generation of Roger William alumni, um, I can officially, now everybody can tell my father that I have beat him because he has not received an award yet from the university. Um, but no, seriously, it's kind of amazing when you talk to a lot of friends from other universities, they don't have the true, like, spirit you know they just it's a school that they just went to right they don't have like a full lifelong um, connection to it and so for us to be able to be a part of it and to get everyone together is really awesome and thank you for uh, giving us this award thank you and I'm now going to pass off the speaking portion of this to Teresa who is my co-vice president on the alumni board Hello, uh, my name is Teresa Agonia, class of 2013. Um, thank you all for being here today. It's my honor to introduce this year's Young Alumni Achievement Award recipient. And as a fellow um, person who received this award, I would just like to say you're in great company. So I just wanted to throw that out there. The Young Alumni Achievement Award recognizes a recent graduate for significant short-term accomplishments who, in their first 10 years since graduation, has made outstanding contributions to their chosen profession and has rendered distinguished service to the public welfare, thus honoring Roger Williams University and the Alumni Association. This year's award goes to Dr. Omar Ba, a Roger Williams graduate with a certificate in community development and a master's in public administration in 2014. Omar is the founder and executive director of the Refugee Dream Center in Providence. The center combines advocacy with direct services for 2,200 refugees to meet their English language, health promotion, young mentor, youth mentoring, and case management needs. The center works with the refugee population after their arrival to target specific gaps and helps to ensure a smoother process to getting on their feet in a new country and learning a new culture. Omar and staff have been working to serve the community daily throughout the pandemic to ensure the needs are met despite the difficult times. Omar connects with each person walking through the door and understands they need someone in their corner to succeed. His own experience as a journalist who was exiled from his home country of Gambia in West Africa for writing stories about the brutal dictator surviving torture and landing in Rhode Island in 2007, a mere three years before first appearing as a Roger Williams student is admirable and illustrates the bravery and drive of our awardee today. The First Amendment freedom of the press, right, is something not taken for granted by Omar as he experienced near death in Gambia for putting truthful words on paper. Omar's passion for refugee rights is personal, and we are lucky to call him one of ours as he continues the hard work to create a safe space and educational experience for refugees coming through the center's doors. His experience and willingness to partner with the state and the city of Providence, which is where I work so I can attest to his contributions, to improve the lives of refugees has not gone unnoticed. 
as he was asked to join the Global Advisory Board of the Center for Human Rights and Humanitarian Studies at the Watson Institute for International and Public Affairs at Brown University. In addition to being the founding representative for the state of Rhode Island at the Refugee Congress in DC, Omar's voice is an important and impactful tool benefiting the people of Rhode Island and beyond. And it should come as no surprise to you that his work has been recognized by many, including the Red Bandana Fund, whose award honors those who work tirelessly and selflessly with so little recognition on behalf of those who need it most. The words tirelessly and selflessly perfectly summarize how Omar goes about his work in the name of others. Bernard Georges, a fellow Roger Williams alum, graduating with his BA in 2011 and his master's degree in public administration in 2015, serves as board chair for the Refugee Dream Center and founder and executive director of New Bridges for Haitian Success, also in Providence, shared with us the following. As a graduate of Roger Williams University, I am very proud of my education and past experiences. I congratulate Dr. Omar Ba for being recognized as an outstanding leader in our great state, Rhode Island. New Bridges for Haitian Success and Refugee Dream Center work closely with incoming immigrant communities and refugees. Our work, no notoriety for ethics and community outreach continue to grow. Mr. Ba has dedicated his entire life to help the refugee community. He is a refugee survivor of torture who knows of the realities, realities that are delicate, intricate, and not, simple, and not simply stories of sensation or academic. Omar tackles these issues with a diversity of voices, perspectives, and opinions around the table as he works with legislators to craft state policies impacting Rhode Island's refugee population. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Roger Williams University for acknowledging his great work. Thank you, Bernard, who is joining us today in the back, along with Omar's family and friends, especially his children, to celebrate the incredible work of Dr. Ba, who in his own words was quoted as saying, I want to be an example for other refugees, despite all the challenges and opportunities that are here. Refugees can do it. I will add that he's not only an example for refugees, but to all Roger Williams alumni of the power of one to impact change in the community and the world. And as a point of personal privilege, as a daughter of immigrants who grew up in a majority minority community of Central Falls, what a privilege it is to meet someone who advocates for those who need it every single day. It is my great honor to present the 2021 Young Alumni Achievement Award to Dr. Omar Ba on behalf of the Roger Williams Alumni Association. Congratulations. Well, um, I know Roger Williams did call Bernard, but I did not know he, they were making this secret, very uh, embarrassing statement about me, but I'm, I'm grateful. You know, one of my sing songs is that of Eunice Kennedy Shriver. I'm sure many people know him, know her. And she says, there's no joy like the joy in unleashing the human spirit. There's no laughter like the laughter of those who are happy with others. And there's no purpose nobler than to build communities of acceptance for all. And I happen to be somebody from two worlds, from the Gambia in West Africa, by the way, the smallest country in Africa, on the mainland, and here we are in the smallest state in America. <laughs> so it, my story starts with there, in Gambia, the challenges that people experience there. So in unleashing the human spirit is what led me to the journey of journalism, wanting to make a difference. It was inspired mostly by women, especially, particularly my mother, she was a woman in the, in the village in Gambia, struggling, suffering domestic violence, fetching water for more than 20 people, doing laundry for them, struggling, taking care of eight children. And I wanted to make a difference. You know, the closest thing to an ambulance was a donkey car. And we had to go five miles to 10 miles to get something that looks like healthcare. 
So when I grew up, I wanted to be a journalist to make a difference because we had a very serious dictatorship. The dictator was killing people, imprisoning people, extreme levels of poverty. Everybody lived in less than a dollar a day. So I wanted to be a reporter so that I would highlight these stories so that there would be a difference. People would have a voice, and that's why I became a journalist. But that cost me a lot. As Teresa indicated, I was arrested and tortured at the military barracks, and eventually, after so many years of struggle with military dictatorship, I ended up being declared a wanted person for writing about the dictator. Luckily for me, I escaped, went to Senegal, then Ghana, to cut a long story short, I ended up in Rhode Island. And funnily for me, I, why are they taking me to the smallest places? You know, I ended up <laughs> in Rhode Island, and I knew the name just a day before my arrival. Just one day, you know, the case manager who was working with the State Department in Ghana said, oh, you're going to Providence. I thought actually it is um, uh, some sort of a church group because of Providence. And they said, no, it's not a church. It's the capital city of Rhode Island. I said, OK, this is going to be a problem. I'm, I'm going to America or I'm going to an island. They said, <laughs> they said no, 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 you're going to America. But the moment I arrived in America, the moment I stepped foot in America, the Eunice Kennedy Shriver dictum of making others happy is what happened to me. And I got the laughter that made me happy. I found Roger Williams along the way. You know, a new re refugee here. I had only a, a green card and mostly a, an I-94, a small card that looks very insignificant, an I-94. You take it to places, they say, oh, there's nothing. You need a green card. And Roger Williams believed in me. They gave me the academic opportunity to build the fortitude I needed in order to do the work I, needed, I wanted to do. Of course, I was new here. I didn't want to be a journalist anymore. I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to do something else. But I wanted to do something similar to what inspired me to be a journalist in the first place. Then I found the refugee community. I was the only refugee from Gambia, by the way. It's a small country. They're mostly in Atlanta and other places, the, the warmer places. You know? So I, I was here with a lot of refugees from Iraq then, from Afghanistan, Liberia, Rwanda, from people fleeing the genocide. And eventually, uh, I found community around them. I found home. I wanted to be around individuals like that. So I wanted to study public administration. And Roger Williams was the best place to come to study. You know, had amazing people I met along the way. Dr. Hall, you know, President Faris, the late President Faris. He was an amazing supporter of my work and the refugee community. But finally, um, the purpose of building noble communities of support for all is what eventually landed me in working for refugees. I met a young woman who is a single woman uh, from Rwanda. Her husband was arrested along the way and tortured and taken to, to prison. She came with two kids who did not have anything to do. She has no job. She couldn't speak English. These kids needed work. So the work we did with her at the Refugee Dream Center to get this young lady situated and established and integrated into American society is what motivates me. I want to make a difference in the lives of people like that. I met a young lady whose mom I only knew. I knew the mom. I never met the lady. She was struggling in school in California. And the mom contacted me. She has to go to school or go back to Africa because she's going through challenges. I contacted the school here. President Faris was not here. But some people knew me. They knew that I want to bring a family, a whole village, to Roger Williams. They accepted her with a scholarship of $18,000. She graduated recently. And actually, I saw Megan when I came to the graduation. I said, I didn't know you have somebody here. I said, I'm bringing a village here. Um, <laughs> Last year, I had the opportunity to apply for two of the youth I mentor for. I mentor at the Refugee Dream Center. There's this big scholarship at Rhode Island Foundation called the Roger Williams Scholarship. It's named after the same fellow. And these kids were awarded $80,000 to go to school for four years. And the two of them chose this place. They chose Roger Williams University. They're currently here. So one graduated, two are here, and believe me, a whole village is coming. Because, and the village means the world. I mean, you know, in line with the name of this, this building is the Global Heritage Society, right? We'll bring the UN here, the whole world, because we, at the Refugee Dream Center, we work with refugees from all over the world. We work with people from Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, everywhere, you know, in Africa, people from Congo. Actually, the smallest population is people from the Gambia. That happen to be like the nucleus of everything surrounding around refugees. So on behalf of every refugee, 
uh, on behalf of every Gambian, by the way, because I'm always proud of the Gambia. It's what motivated me to do, want to do what I'm doing. Of everybody working with me at the Refugee Dream Center, the population we serve, of every alumni, my family, my wife, my two kids, this award is for you. It's for me and for you. I, I dedicate it to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Congratulations again. That's what it's all about. That was very moving. I am going to be presenting the Distinguished Alum of the Year. This award recognizes a graduate with more than 10 years of experience for significant long-term success in personal and professional achievements who has made outstanding contributions to their profession and has rendered distinguished service to the public welfare thus honoring Roger Williams and the Alumni Association. This, year, this year's award goes to Sharon Costelli, a Roger Williams graduate earning a degree in psychology in 1986, in addition to three master's degrees in social work, urban studies, and counseling and psychological services following her Roger Williams days. Sharon is the chief executive officer for Chrysalis Center Housing Development Corporation, Chrysalis Center Real Estate Corporation, and Chrysalis Center. The Housing Development Corporation develops affordable and supportive housing throughout the state of Connecticut, including rehabilitation, historic preservation, and new construction. The real estate arm is a nonprofit real estate holding corporation with over 35 million of assets while the Chrysalis Center is a socially innovative multi-service nonprofit organization with over $12 million of operations that assists over 1,500 individuals and families each year in transforming their lives through employment, housing, food security, and other community-based services. Persons received are those living in or with extreme poverty, mental illness, HIV, AIDS, substance use, and or leaving incarceration or homelessness. Chrysalis is the largest supportive housing provider in the state of Connecticut and the largest provider of services to homeless veterans. During the COVID pandemic, they remained open daily to support and serve the residents in need, a common bond shared with Omar of selfless service to others. Sharon's career has been full of awards through the years, recognizing the dedication and compassion given to her clients as they face hard obstacles to get back under their feet. Two awards stood out to me. The 2018 Barbara Geller Lifetime Career Achievement Award, recognizing individuals who work tirelessly throughout their lifetime and stand above the crowd over decades of truly extraordinary work towards ending and preventing homelessness in Connecticut. And the Woman of Fire Award, honoring outstanding women who are groundbreakers, innovators, leaders, and visionaries. I can't think of a better description than a woman of fire to describe Sharon's trailblazing career. She is passionate about her work and an innovator, having created the idea of building the Urban Roots Hydroponic Growing Center, which, which produces a variety of lettuces and microgreens year-round to support the food share, food share and culinary programs at Chrysalis. Sharon attended a hydroponics conference to learn how to launch the on-site farm herself. Her same fiery spirit was seen back in her student days at Roger Williams as the first female athlete to finish her career with 12 varsity letters in volleyball, basketball, and softball. She helped the volleyball team win the 1984 ECAC Division, Division III championship and achieve its first ever national ranking, standing at 15th in the nation. Her accomplishments on the basketball court were just as impressive, holding the school record for most assists in a season at 173 and tied for fifth all time for career assists. She was a member of the inaugural Athletic Hall of Fame class in 2012. Sharon's dear friend and classmate, Mary Chase, shares, congratulations, Sharon. 
I am not surprised that you would receive this recognition. As captain of our basketball team, you showed great leadership and took us all under your wing then and now. You have shown that personality in your profession as well. As CEO of Chrysalis, you show that desire to help those in need. That warm heart has paid off both professionally and socially. It's no secret that Sharon's respect and care for her clients is not only seen by all, but is felt by the people she's helping daily. And her belief in their future is what pushes them to try for themselves. She has changed countless lives by sometimes being the only person of hope and positivity in her client's world. As Sharon says herself, we must remember to always do the right thing, not the easy thing. It is my great honor to present the 2021 Distinguished Alum of the Year Award to Sharon Costelli on behalf of the Roger Williams Alumni Association. Congratulations. Sharon is unable to be here in person today and sends her regrets and sincere appreciation for the award. But she has recorded a message for us, which we will play right now. Hi, I'm Sharon Costelli, Roger Williams class of 1986. I graduated with a bachelor's in psychology and a minor in social work and education. I was also the first male or female athlete to earn 12 varsity letters during my four years at Roger Williams playing volleyball, basketball and softball. Today, I'm the CEO of a nonprofit organization called Chrysalis Center. I'm also the CEO of two other nonprofit organizations. One is the Chrysalis Center Real Estate Corporation, which is a holding corporation for um, housing. And I also am the CEO of Chrysalis Center Housing Development Corporation, where I develop supportive and affordable housing throughout the state of Connecticut. Chrysalis Center is a multi-service nonprofit where we serve individuals that are living in severe poverty, uh, those that are food insecure, uh, individuals and families living with mental health, substance abuse, HIV, and those returning from incarceration and homelessness. We provide case management, uh, employment, recovery services. Uh, we have a fresh food pantry, and we serve about 1,500 people a year. During the pandemic, was truly a challenge to my leadership, certainly the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. And having been both a coach uh, for many years, as well as teaching at a college level, as well as an elementary level in, in years past, um, I think that Roger Williams really gave me the foundation, uh, the leadership to um, support my employees. Uh, we, we have over 100 employees and about 1,500 plus clients. and you know, trying to keep everybody safe during that time when we really didn't even know what this pandemic was. Um, I'm really proud to say that we had minimal uh, impact in the workplace. We were considered essential, so we came in every day uh, to provide support to our, to our client base. And so this award is especially um, uh, important to me because Having gone through the past year and the anxieties of keeping people safe while providing services um, was a very difficult one. It was definitely the most challenging for me. So I just want to thank uh, the committee for honoring me with the Distinguished uh, Alumni Award. I, I not only appreciate this, but it's, a, it's a, a powerful reminder of the impact that Roger Williams can have on your life. The foundation that you get there really can help uh, help you not only lead through difficult times, um, but I think also is the foundation to critically think and to make sure that uh, as you grow through life, that those foundations are there as you aspire into new, uh, new opportunities and lead through difficult times. So um, thank you again for this very distinguished award. Not only do I greatly appreciate it, um, I just want to say that once a hawk, always a hawk. I just want to congratulate again all of our honorees, and thank you for um, all of our honorees that were here in person and via video. 
Um, and thank you all for attending and joining together as a community to celebrate our alumni accomplishments. This is why reunion matters. To be together, to reconnect with classmates and faculty and staff, celebrating our classmates' success and to hear about our institution's future because we're all a part of it as alumni. And for our alumni in the room, I hope you will re-engage with the Alumni Association and alumni community. You know, we talked a little bit about the themes of mentorship today. That's what it's all about. It's about leveraging the resources among our alumni community. I hope you take a student under your wing, take another alum under your wing and be there and be supportive. That's what it's all about. Um, and I hope we see you this summer. We'll be touring across country, um, holding different receptions and having many reunions for reunion alumni and non-reunion alumni. So check out the website. Um, we'll be there, hope you'll be there. Um, and again, attending events like this and re-engaging and meeting each other and keeping that pride um, alive. For those joining us at dinner, it might already be six o'clock, but it's six o'clock in the Upper Commons. Um, I hope you will join us. I believe it's a tour of Rhode Island, so I will be there. And um, that's a wrap. So thank you for being here.